It's uh, always a big pleasure to meet and uh, interact with Devendra Ji. I've known him for many years now. Uh, and I just, uh, I was told a few hours ago that I've got to have this conversation with him. I was told, uh, don't make it too political. Uh, and I was told that it should be something where Devendra Ji also has fun. So I'm going to try doing both. Um, but this thing that I was asked to do by the leading marketers of India, don't make it too political. The politician ka brand, is it getting bad more than it used to be earlier? Is it getting better? Brand politician as a profession. Aap us pe kuch, tell us what you think about the brand politician. Dekhye, jo jada bikta hai, us pe jada charcha hoti hai. So politics is like that. You know, unfortunately, if you look at the films, initially after independence, Sahukar was the villain. Then, you know, it was in Shole, Jab, uh, the villain used to be Daku. Then, Uske Baad, Thir Smuggler. Aaj kal aap film dekhe, usme doi villain aapko dikhta hai, ya to politician dikhta hai, ya police wala dikhta hai. So, I think, uh, having said that, I think politics is all about building brand. It is all about communication. See, those politicians who have been winning elections, who have been, uh, you know, constantly people are supporting them, these are the people who are best communicators. Like our Prime Minister uh, Modi ji is one of the best communicators in this country. He communicates with the last man. Even the last man feels that this person is talking with me and he is talking about me. So I think it's all about brand Modi. Likewise, there are several leaders in this country who, who have developed their own brand, uh, their own style of politics, their own style of communication. And I think that is what is needed today. Uh, you know, in, in today's polity, uh, your personality is also defined by what type of reels you make. What type of reels people watch about you? So it's changing. I mean, the perception is is uh, is all about uh, you know politics is all about perception. So I think uh, that's that's a, a big challenge. Devendra ji, uh, thirteen I think thirteen years ago when I first met you, uh, communicating. You you touched on this. I want to get into a little bit more communicating as a politician thirteen years ago and communicating as a politician today. What has changed? I think uh, the thing that has changed is that 13 years ago, it was a very deep communication. You know, uh, the communication was uh, more serious than today. Today, communication is more about perception. I mean, what point you make. So, there's so much to consume. So, you know, people have a very short memory today because every second they have something to consume either on their mobile or on the TV or on some other media. So today it is about making your point. That's all. And for that, do you feel that you need to become louder and louder? I mean, do you feel that there's a competition that you have with yourself? No. I have got to be more, you know, sensational. I'm, I'm speaking almost as a news person, but it's... Because politicians, politics and news goes quite hand in hand. So we also then seem that the industry, news I, industry gets louder and louder. And I, I don't think you have to be louder, but you have to be smarter. It is a time when the communication has to be very smart. And of course, smart communication means creating few sensations. But if you just go on creating sensation and that sensation is not backed by your action, then people will not believe in you. So every thing which you portray must be backed by action. So I think that is the key today. You know, uh, when we first met, I, 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 I've told you this before, you know, you always struck me as one of those young politicians, BJP's young politician, who had a lot of strong personal convictions. You know, you, you had your beliefs, you were very strong about your views. Somewhere in this world where you're communicating in, in a short attention span, do you feel that your personal convictions are kind of, you feel forced to match your personal convictions with what the 
with what the audience wants. But the audience's conviction should be matching with yours now because you're in this game that... You're absolutely right. Uh, to some extent, that's absolutely true. Because, you know, ultimately, you have to be relevant in the game. And to be relevant, you see, we are in a democracy. And in democratic world, you have to think about people's aspiration. You have to match the people's aspiration. And a leader has to mold the people's aspiration. So it is always, you know, a fight between matching the aspiration and molding the aspiration. Matching the aspiration is very easy because you have to flow. You have to actually swim with the flow. But molding the aspiration is something which is very tough. And I think as a leader, you have to understand that going with the flow always is not the way. You can win election by going with the flow, but if you want real transformation, that real transformation can come only when you have capacity to mold the views of people, to mold the aspirations of people. The one thing that I feel sometimes is common between advertisers and politicians is that sometimes both have to be a little liberal with the truth. Uh, you, you know, you've got to kind of say things that you need to say. To, uh, if you are in the seat, then how will you be able to uh, think? Uh, how, do you, how do you process that when you're faced with this problem? Ki, you know, sometimes you've got to, you know, duck a true question or you've got to, you know, not go to a space where you know you're on a weak footing. How do you, how do you process so I, this? I, I've convinced myself there are always three sides. One is your side, one is my side, and one is true side. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to, you know, have to, to, to have conviction that you are right, but there is always a true side. And yes, there are, there are uh, certain times when you have to duck the questions because, you know, you, you just cannot justify every single thing. So many things happen in your life. There are certain things in your life where your conviction doesn't allow you to, you know, justify those things. But ultimately, you have to live with truth because in today's world, if you are out of game, you are out of game. If you remain in your game, then you may be able to act up to 80% according to your conviction. So I think for me, if you ask me, uh, I would always like to be in the game and then to work with my conviction. So, Devindaji, the, Abhijo, the alliance that's happened, uh, you were obviously waiting for that question to come, I'm sure. But was that that 20% moment or was it in the 80% moment? No. You see, that is about, you know, the true side. I have my side, they have their side and there is a true side. So, for me, to stay relevant in the politics, this alliance was necessary. Had it not been necessary, I would not have gone with them. But today, when everybody is grouping against me, against my party, against my leader, then I cannot say, no, I'll fight alone. Aap game mein rahe kar hi fight kar sakte Interesting. So, uh, and I don't want to ask too many tough political questions, but I, this force of habit, I guess. Um, Devanji, what would you say to that first-time voter? You know, wo jo ke aapke manifesto pad rahe hain. he's making an educated, you know, he's spending a lot of hours discussing. He's not voting because his parents are voting a particular way. He's thought it through. He's gone and voted for a particular party, a particular politician who he believes should be leading Maharashtra. And then they all just get together and then, you know, they, the, the alliance is something completely sort of what they hadn't thought of. Aap kya bolenge unko? Jo he's invest, you know, the, that... The few people who spend time in thinking about it. You know, first thing I will say, please register as voter. Why I'm saying that, I would like to use this platform to appeal uh, the young voter because the other day I was uh, uh, sitting with the election commissioner of Maharashtra uh, and then we had a meeting with uh, all the uh, vice chancellors of the university because, uh, you know, we, we found out that uh, between the age of 18 and 22, only 11% people are registered as voters. So they may have their views, but those views will never reflect 
You're talking about including the migrants who have come in or people who live in Maharashtra? In Maharashtra. The, the, Only 11 percent. 18 to 22. Now, it must have, uh, I mean, number must have increased because we started a, a, a campaign. Uh, government also started a campaign. Uh, Vice chancellors also started a campaign. Maybe 30 percent, but... It's still a frighteningly still, small yeah, number. 70 yeah. percent people who have views. Those views are not important because they are not voting. Your view is important if you are a voter. If you don't vote and in, in democracy, if you say that this should have happened, that should have happened, it is your loss. You didn't go for vote. You didn't register. So I would like to first tell all these young people that be part of democracy. Be part of the change you want. Register yourself as voter. Assert. And you have a power to change a government as well. Because, you see, it's a youthful country. Our median age is 27. So yeah. 18 to 22 is such a large number of voters who can actually make a difference. So I think the first thing I would like to appeal to them is to register as voters. And brand Maharashtra as when Devendra as deputy, uh, Devendra as CM and brand Maharashtra with Devendra Fadnavis as deputy CM. What is the difference? There's not much difference. The only difference is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm now deputy. That is the only difference. Otherwise, <laughs> brand Maharashtra is there. It is there to stay. And I'm telling you that you see, uh, when our Prime Minister aspires to make uh, India a 5 trillion economy, Maharashtra has to lead the way. Because Maharashtra is powerhouse of India. And I think Maharashtra has to become a trillion dollar economy to make India a 5 trillion economy. And I'm sure, uh, you see, in Maharashtra, uh, with, with our strategy, of, uh, you know, uh, we, we believe that today the speed of travel and the speed of data will determine how we will develop. And you see the amount of infrastructure which we are creating because speed of travel not only gives you ease of living but also saves time, it saves money. If you want to become a part of global supply chain, you have to have hassle-free movement yeah. of goods. So the speed of travel and the speed of data, of course, we are in an era of 5G and this speed of data will make us reach the last man of the society. So I think these are the two things and leveraging, you know, uh, uh, the technology. In fact, we can, uh, we can develop. So brand Maharashtra is all about technology. Brand Maharashtra is all about, uh, you know, uh, startup. And I must tell you, wherever I get a forum, I tell people that today there are many cities which boast that they are startup capitals. No, the startup capital of India is Maharashtra because Maharashtra accounts for highest number of startups. We account for 16,000 startups out of 90,000 registered startups in India. And amongst 100 unicorns, Maharashtra accounts for 25 unicorns. So we are the business magnet of India. I actually, I didn't know about the startup fact, so I've learned uh, this piece today. Um, you brought up uh, Ma Maharashtra being one trillion for India to be five trillion. I'll ask one last question, then I'll get to rapid fire. Um, tell us a little bit about that, the, the big uh, sort of investments or FDI was supposed to come into Maharashtra and didn't. Foxconn, hai, Airbus, hai, drugs, hai. where did... I think, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I must not be saying this, but... Uh, Thrice we missed Foxconn. I mean, uh, twice because of the geopolitical situation and third time, you know, uh, ultimately, uh, there was a policy paralysis in Maharashtra for some time. And uh, that deal was expecting something concrete from the, uh, you know, investment committee and the investment committee in Maharashtra did not meet for 18 months. And, you know, in, in today's competitive world, you cannot sit idle and you cannot sit for 18 months without uh, having a meeting of investment committee. But I think uh, uh, having said that, Maharashtra is a magnet. There will be a one day when Foxconn will have to come to Maharashtra. Lovely the confidence. I'll get to rapid fire, but if uh, Mr. Godrej or other wants to ask a question, please just sh like wave at me in the middle or... 
piece. Okay. So they will be rapid fire, short answers, and it's a, it's it's the fun it's the fun part of the evening. Uh, Devendra when will Mumbai's coastal road be ready? End of this year. End of this year, major part of coastal road will be open to the people. Only the last part of the coastal road because we increased the gap between uh, you know two poles. So that that will be uh, yeah, that will be yet to be finished. Otherwise, by end of this year, we'll start the coastal road. Um, the last. Bolly, I know you like movies. The last Bollywood film you watched and enjoyed? <laughs> I don't want to tell because I did not enjoy that movie. <laughs> All of us know that uh, for that movie, everybody was excited and it uh, ultimately failed. So I don't want to name that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got uh, Adi of your answer. So <laughs> <laughs> the one political party. Adi will... ka ant ho gaya. <laughs> Adi ka ant ho gaya. The one political party you'll never enter into an alliance with? Congress. Congress. Indian National Congress. The one politician you'll never enter an alliance with who's not from the Congress? No, I think, uh, uh, I mean, politician as such, uh, you know, uh, I think in, in politics, we are not enemies. You know, we are uh, actually political opponents. So I won't say that I won't interact with a politician like that, but, you know, we are absolutely opposed to the policies of Congress. So maybe any, any, anybody from Congress or anybody who is, uh, uh, you know, prone to the ideology of Congress, I'll never uh, enter into alliance with them. The one politician who is not in your alliance, but who you admire. So, you know, uh, uh, there are many, uh, but uh, you know, in politics, you should not say that because nowadays, if uh, you know, you say that this politician of this party is a good politician, immediately that video will be circulated everywhere. And look, Mr. Fadnavis has <laughs> endorsed me and my party or my leader. So that is disastrous for me. So in our private conversation, I will tell you three people who I admire. <laughs> and they are not from my party. No, privately, I think I know the answers, but anyway. Um, Devaji, the one advertisement that you remember today, that you like and you remember. Ah. From any time. You just don't, don't, don't think current. <laughs> it can be from any time. You see, the best which we have been admiring for many days is Amul. Amul. Even today. Fantastic. You've made a few tables very happy here, clearly. Um, Devendra brand INDIA, what does it mean to you? <laughs> See, I thank, thank you for calling it INDIA. If you would have called it India, I would never like India to fail. INDIA is going to fail, but India will never fail. Aside from Narendra Modi, one politician you think who would make an outstanding advertiser? There are many. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I can name 10 people who are the best actors. <laughs> apart from being politicians. So, maybe not appropriate to name them. Okay, uh, I'll end with the last question. Divinji, I know you like long drives. We know you like to go on long drives. So just imagine that the coastal road has opened, the full coastal road has opened, and you have to get in, you have to choose between two cars to get into for this long drive. One car is driven by Mahatma Gandhi, and the other car is driven by Veer Savarkar. Which car do you choose? I would like to drive myself. <laughs> I'll ask them. Whosoever is ready to sit with me <laughs> while I am driving, he is welcome. Divinji has been dodging the questions very well and appropriately. Thank you so much for being at IAA. Thank you for your time.